All right, hello guys. Uh, so let's jump into these videos. Uh, the purpose of these videos is to try to get you uh, more support um, than time allows for in class, or at least to focus on what the class is going to be on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so take these to kind of be as an a la carte. Um, you're not required to watch any of them. Um, this is just trying to me offer you some extra help and direction, more in-depth instruction about things that you're not quite sure about. So if you're watching this, thank you. Uh, that means you're making a really good effort to try to get better and try to kind of prepare yourself for the things you want to do um, post pre-calculus. Um, so let's jump into it. So this is a parking lot. Um, there's going to be several of these videos, but I want to start with the function side of things because I think that's maybe um, the most content-driven thing that someone's posted so far, people have posted so far. Um, and so we have a question about rational cubic and logarithmic functions. Um, so let me say this first. Um, if you're the one that posted this question, thank you very much. As we're continuing this process, like in the future, uh, I'm going to encourage you to try to make your questions as focused as possible, as specific as possible. Um, certainly, I don't mind talking a lot about logarithmic functions, and I will in one of these uh, videos I'm going to make. Um, but the more specific you can make your question, the better. Um, otherwise, you might find me rambling on for like 20, 30 minutes about log functions. Um, so uh, let's focus on rational for this first video um, because I think it's a very specific question. I think one that we can answer fairly quickly. Um, so let's slide over. I'm, I'm gonna, I loaded up the marker activity that we did um, to start the class um, a class or two ago, the one where it has like a different colored pencil and we had to all add information to, about these functions. Uh, so I have it loaded up here. I want to talk about the general function, but before I do, I, I kind of want to make this point. Um, these quadratic, cubic, uh, logarithmic, rational functions, these are all functions that you should have a lot of experience with in Algebra 2. Now, I know realistically, depending on who your Algebra 2 teacher was, this may or may not be a true statement. Um, so uh, I want to assure you of one thing. Um, I'm not expecting anyone to be an expert on, on these functions yet. Like These are all functions we're going to expand your knowledge on as the year continues. Um, so really what I want you to glean from this activity or this per far, first part of the class um, is that there does exist a lot of functions, um, but if you notice the questions I'm asking you over and over again, these eight questions, um, they tend to be the same for all the functions so far, and there are questions I can ask you about, like linear functions, for example. Um, so I want you to understand, like, right now I'm not expecting anyone to be an expert, um, but what I do want to put in your head is this idea that when you look at a function, there's certain pieces of information that should immediately jump to mind. Um, it's in the same category as, like, a brain dump. Um, so like when you think about quadratic, when you think about cubic or logarithmic or whatever, um, there are certain things you should really start thinking of right away. Um, now specifically this question asks about rational, so let's go there. Um, one of the most important things you can think about when you think about a function is the general form. Now the general form is just what we call a literal equation, um, which, is, which means like no specific number is used unless that number is maybe like a power or something of that nature um, that's going to be present no matter what uh, version or specific example of the function you're looking at. Um, so with rational, this is really interesting. Um, now, if you think about a rational number, uh, a rational number is a number, and I'm just going to write this up here just so we're kind of on the same page. Um, when you say rational, we're just talking about a number that can be expressed as a over b. Um, that's a rational number, which tells you when, when you think about this term rational, you should really think, be thinking about this idea of a fraction. Um, because rational numbers are basically those can be expressed as fractions, uh, which means rational functions are functions that express themselves as fractions as well. Um, now, although this is not necessarily the general form, it's a good place to start. Um, so that means if a rational function takes the place or takes the form of a fraction, um, all rational functions should be expressible like this. Now, I'm just using function notation just to kind of temporarily um, place this kind of in the fraction form. Uh, but please know that G, F, and H, there's nothing special about those three uh, choices. I just want to use function notation. Um, so this is a rational function because I'm expressing this as a numerator and denominator, in other words, a fraction, where we have F of X serving as a numerator, and we have H of X serving as a denominator. Okay, um, so expressing them in function notation is a big hint to how this thing all comes together. Um, because I'm expressing them as a function, that means um, when I make an, an actual example, I have to use functional things. Um, now, another term that's important to talk about here is a term polynomial. Um, now, polynomial, if you don't recall, um, just refers to a multi-termed expression. Um, if you break down the term polynomial, that's actually what it translates into. Um, so poly basically means many. And you can take this idea or the suffix of nomial, 
um, as terms, meaning that a polynomial is just a multi-term thing. Now you have lots of experience with this, even if you don't remember the, no, um, sorry, the terminology. Um, so something even as simple as this, like f of x is equal to say 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. That's an example of a polynomial, which means that's a number, or that's a string, excuse me, that I could use in as part of the numerator. Um, now, this is not limited, of course, to squared functions, to uh, quadratic functions. Uh, this could really be anything that's expressible as a polynomial. Um, so this could be something like negative 4x to the fourth plus 3x to the third plus 2x uh, squared plus x minus 1. Like, that's also a polynomial. And so if the general uh, form takes the form of a fraction include a fraction of polynomials, and these are exact examples of polynomials, that means a rational function could look something like this, um, just as an example. And so I could have this function, let's call it f using the, the argument of x, of uh, 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 over negative 4x, so I'm going to shorten it a bit, 4x third plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 10. So that would be an example of a rational function. Um, so we're seeing kind of the general function. Um, we got to fill in the numerator and denominator with polynomials. These are just two examples. And so this could be an example rational function. Now, none of this is generalized, of course. Um, so the general function that I offered took the form of something like this. Uh, so let's see, we have f of x. Uh, and the top, I believe, was written as something like a sub n, x to the n. Um, and I, I think I continued, and I think I wrote something like b to the n, x to the n minus 1. Uh, and then I think I probably wrote c and x, n minus 2. And then I did some like dot, dot, dot thing and wrote like d to the n power. So it's very easy to get overwhelmed when looking at something like this. Um, but please know all I did is, is generalize what a polynomial is going to look like. Now I'm using a lot of notation here. Um, and when I put in the bottom, I think it's going to be more clear why I had to make all this notation. Um, and I think, so let's look at the bottom version. So I'm going to write a to the m, x to the m, plus b sub m, x to the m minus 1. And let's see, c to the m, x to the m minus 2 add dot 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 uh, d to the m. Um, so if you look and compare this polynomial to this top, um, hopefully you can start to see that I'm just generalizing the top polynomial. And so if I take like this a value right there, uh, also called the leading coefficient, um, I'm just using that to represent 3. Okay, um, this n power, which is the degree of the polynomial, is just generalizing this 2. Um, so that means b, that means a b is a 2, and the c is uh, the 1. So uh, if you're getting confused by why I'm using like the a sub n, x to the n, b sub n, x to n minus 1, um, it's because if you look in the actual function, I'm using just x's. And so I have to start separating these things top and bottom to which belong to the numerator, which belongs to the denominator. And so like on the top, um, let me try to zoom in here. And so on the top, I'm using a sub n x to the n, um, which all I'm saying with that is that the top degree, which I'm representing by n, uses the a, and I want to keep the n with the x to the n um, to separate them from the bottom, which I'm also using the same variables, the same unknowns. And so please don't get confused like why I'm using n's and m's. It's just my way of keeping that to the numerator denominator. Now, as far as like the n and then n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3 business, you have to look at the polynomial here. Um, if you notice, the, uh, let's say on the denominator, that's a 3, that's a 2, that would actually be a 1, and that would be x to the 0. And so I'm trying to represent that in a typical well-ordered polynomial, the, the uh, powers will simply descend. And so here, if this n, say, is a 2, um, it's typical that the next n power be 1 less. And then last n power would be one, after, one less from there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, there's a lot of notation here, um, but none of it should be too scary. It's just an attempt at generalization. Um, so we're generalizing here, so this can fit a whole lot, a lot of models 
instead of me having to write um, the specific one over and over again. Um, so this speaks a lot to what we've been doing in class, where if we take a simple idea, um, like just a uh, quotient of polynomials, um, defining, defining a rational function, we're going to generalize it to be something like this that's applicable in all cases, um, which is one third really of our, our year in really high level math study. Um, so I hope that helped. Um, if there's further questions, further clarifications I can give you, please let me know. Post them on the wall, ask me in class, email, email me, see me in math lab, do something um, so we can make sure we get this, this concept well understood. Um, so once again, I'm not asking you to be a expert on rational functions. I'm just trying to get you in a place where you're going to be very soon. All right. Um, so I hope that helped. Um, there'll be other videos that cover the logarithmic and I think cubic examples, as well as some of the other stuff that you posted. Um, so if you have other questions, please don't hesitate. Uh, do everything you can to get ready. So thank you, and I'll see you later.